Every Nigerian must be instrumental to the growth and development of our nation through the use of innovative energy and idea to lead and initiate policies that will sustain the economy and enhance good governance. With all the financial turmoil facing the world, it has become pertinent for exchange of new ideas that will enhance good governance. Please subscribe to our channels, listen to our messages and engage with us. With your support, we can transform the lives of all Nigerians. Welcome to the Season 2 of the NESG Radio. So we've seen that some Nigerian founded or Nigerian companies with Nigerian founders have started, you know, leaving the country and relocating, you know, outside the country to have their headquarters elsewhere. Do you think this has to do with the policy environment? Not to mention any companies in particular, but why do we see that some companies are relocating and finding their headquarters outside of the country? Is there something the government should be doing? You know, in terms of, is it a policy environment situation? Is it an interest rate situation? Is it an uncertainty situation? Why are we having companies leaving? Okay, we can say it's uncertainty generally. And what are the uncertainty? We have macro uncertainty. We have social unrest, insecurity. So when we look at macro uncertainty, interest rate is uncertain, exchange rate is uncertain, and you don't expect me to remain in a country where I cannot tell you what the next exchange rate is if I'm into a forward market, I can't tell you. Then you also look at insecurity of lives and property. You are in a place where your property is at risk. Is You know when they say your car is parked at owner's risk. That's where we are in Nigeria. So everything you do is packed at your own risks. You, you can't hold anybody responsible. So even if you have a security official at that um, point where your property is, and if anything happens, you can't still hold that person responsible. So people are looking for a place where their investment is safe, both physical and non-physical investment, where it is safe and where they are sure of the macro environment, where they are sure that I don't have a policy today and tomorrow is changed yes, overnight. Yes, policy reversal. Exactly. Are, no, Essentially, no. when you look at recently, we were talking about the first subsidy will be removed in June this year, right? And all of a sudden, the government said, we are not removing not it happening. till further notice. Yes. No, I think it's people, people have, have actually planned that, okay, this is what is going to happen. And mm. they've made their plans based on that. And just all of a sudden you called it off. It means they have to go back to the drawing board. So issues like that are things that's making some of our own companies move their headquarters somewhere else where they have in quotes, a safe heaven. Okay, so in addition to what um, Faith has actually explained, so if you look at our report, so we also actually identified some key events we actually observe would impact the Nigerian economy in 2022. And we actually used some of these events to actually drive some of the scenarios we have. So, for example, we had here as the first removal of proposed removal of first subsidy. So that was planned for the end of February 2022 was planned alongside the implementation of the Petroleum Industry Act that was signed last year. So when you look at this, some companies will have started positioning their investment and this investment will come in as FDI that will have helped create jobs, that will have helped achieve some level of sectoral stability across growth. You know, some of these will have been issues that will have... So, you making a decision, extending it for the next 18 months, one year and six months. So no investors would like to come into that environment where clear policy uncertainties or risk are obvious. Not like policy risks are clearly obvious. So we also identify issues around the implementation of the new development plan. How lofty development plan will have been, but the level of policy inconsistency, willingness to follow through, the non-willingness of government to follow through some of their plans, so would make people even doubt implementation of this plan. We also move forward to identify the completion of Dangote refinery. You know, 
it has been on i think this is probably the fourth time we'll be mentioning or the third time we'll be mentioning this launch or completion in our report so for people positioning towards the downstream or midstream sector of nigeria so these are clearly some of the issues that we'll be looking at just as fit mentioned we have issue of rising insecurity across the country so this affects inflation this affects domestic production of goods and services so it is caught to them that a big one like the big elephant in the euro is the issue of forex shortage foreign exchange shortage and persistent backlog of demand so just like i've mentioned earlier my concern would be if i should bring in my x billion dollars into this country how visible is it for me to withdraw my capital from this country when i am willing or when i like to do so so these are core issues we actually identify across other issues and like we have mentioned this event or these issues are what are the key drivers or would be the key drivers of nigerian economy in 2022 and they would actually influence investment they would influence sectoral performance especially those sectors that create job they would influence the level of inflation that would have erosion of purchasing power of people which will also translate into drawing more people into the poverty cycle it will affect businesses a lot of businesses will close down so my effect on employment so i think by the time we look at our focus number it also speaks more to okay this. in addition to what sharks has said let's talk about the big elephant the forest shortage now what is the implication for investors if an investor is bringing one dollar into nigeria it means it will convert to naira right yeah. before you can spend and do any other thing so at conversion, let's assume we are using the BDC rate, which is about 570 naira you want to spend, you spend and you do all the, everything you want to do. Let's assume you want to close your business at the end of the day and exchange rate has depreciated to 600. So you convert your 570 that you got, you want to convert it to dollar. It's not up to $1 again. again yeah. So it means the value is eroded just by bringing so these are some of the risk that investors are looking out for uh, if i'm unable to make profits at conversion to the original currency the value is lower than what it used to be so investors cannot take such such risk such uncertainty then when we look at the numbers for the projection basically we look at three scenarios for the outlook the projection for 2022 we looked at three scenarios. So the first one was the business as usual. Then we look at the best case scenario and we look at the worst case scenario. So, well, I'm thinking the business as usual actually mirrored our budget. Budget, yes. Okay. The business as usual was based on the budget, the budget numbers. So we have the assumptions. So the assumptions look at the budget numbers. What was the assumption, the baseline, the benchmark for oil price, the benchmark for oil production and some other things then the best case scenario in the best case scenario we are looking at what is the optimistic position using the uh, budget as the benchmark at what what rate will oil price hit which is higher than the benchmark so we are looking at something above the benchmark that's what we are looking at for the best case scenario Why the worst case scenario we are saying okay if we are not going to hit the benchmark we are not going below a particular amount so if the benchmark is 62 for example we assume for the worst case scenario that the oil price will go to 50 and we assume for the best case scenario we look at 75 even if as of today we have done 93 19, yeah. Yeah. so we don't know well this is just we are still at the beginning the year is still young so we don't know what's going to happen so and based on this we still have another forecast that's going to come up mid-year yeah. So we have an H1 forecast that is going to review this. So this was just based on what we have for last year. Then essentially, we looked at the best case scenario for what's called GDP growth. And we said our GDP will expand by 3.2%. The last year, average for the year so far from Q1 to Q3 was 3.2. 3. 3. Yes. So we are saying if the Q4 numbers is out um, anytime soon, so it should be about 2.7%. That's our forecast. 
for business as usual. Everything remains so that's for as 2020, it is for 2022. 22. Yes. So the business as usual. Why for the worst case scenario, we are saying we will still grow, but not as much as we are going to do if we have the baseline, which is the business as usual. We will grow at 1.8, which is lower than the 2.7 for the business as usual. Then the implication for this is that for the best case scenario, the per capita income, which is household spending, individual spending, per person spending is going to grow by 5%. And we also said that government debt is going to increase by 11%. That's so much. So exactly what are we looking at? Are we saying that it's going to be worse than what we have now? Well, the projection already, the, the government budget is already showing us that uh, we have a lot of borrowing to do next year. Yes. But in addition to what uh, my colleague just explained, so we basically are just basing our assumption on uh, what the budget is. So in our business as usual, it is the government is able to achieve its budget. If the government is able to achieve its budget, we are saying that the economy for 2022 will be growing at 2.7%. This is not just putting the number out, or a lot of people will ask, why are we having 2.7 instead of when we already did 3.2 in three quarter in 2021? Are you saying that the growth will reduce in 2021, even if the government is able to achieve its budget? The reason is that the growth we see in 2021, like uh, a lot of uh, experts will say, is a base yes, effect okay. growth coming from a very low contraction level to a growth level. So the economy expanded impressively. But we hope that by the end of 2021, the economy would have returned to normal based on some of the numbers that came out in the GDP Q1 to Q3. So we hope the economy would have returned to normal. And if government is now doing the same thing, we expect that, well, if the economy is running as business as usual, we see something much more lower. But if the government can do something better, than their budget in terms of policy, in terms of uh, being able to... because And again, there are so many things that get involved in this oil price of a thing that uh, might not be too obvious to everybody because there are so many dealing that comes in and on many occasions the government might not even be able to get the actual pricing we see in the market. You are seeing 93, but what kind of deal do you know that the government gets eventually? So these are some of the things that actually constrain the government to maximize what they see from oil. So we're expecting that um, if they do better in terms of what they get, we're expecting 3.2%. However, if they do below what they themselves set for themselves, we're expecting something like 1.8%. Uh, but yeah, critically, so when you look at NHG's um real GDP growth projection. I think we are magnanimous with the Nigerian economy. So we had like high expectation for the economy. So we actually gave a 3.2 projection or a forecast. So which is actually higher than the 2.7 from IMF and also higher than the 2.5 from World Bank. So I know IMF by April of this year would actually review their forecast based on obtainable facts and economic condition. But so I'm thinking a projection that we had and which has always been NES's policy stand is we are always optimistic that government would take the needed decision around revitalizing the economy. Um, just like my colleagues have mentioned in their discussion, majority of the growth we had this year was not as a result of a clear policy change or some other things. So I think with our 3.2 best case scenario, I think we, we, we are optimistic that the economy will do well in 2022. Great. Thank you, guys. I think we've gone very much in depth of um, what happened in the Nigerian economy 2021-2022. So we see some upsides in 2021. So we see growth picking up. So the first three quarters, we had about 3.2% economic growth. And we see inflation also tapering. So it was quite high in the first few months, but we see the inflation numbers coming down. Um, we also saw upward movement in crude oil prices, but this was a bit of a double-edged sword because, you know, although it kind of helped Nigeria's revenue on one side, on the other hand, it also meant higher spending on fuel subsidies. You can get the report at www.nesgroup.org 
forward slash Outlook 2022. So that's www.nesgroup.org forward slash Outlook 2022. And also catch us up across all our socials at official NESG. My name is Oluwase Vincent, and on behalf of myself and my colleagues here in the studio, do have a great one. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening to our content today. Remember to subscribe to the NESG Radio. Follow us across all social media channels and visit our website www.nesgroup.org/nesgradio. NESG in the national interest.